Got a little fruity today. Look how cute these are. I'm gonna give you a little close up. Look at a little shaker card. I thought the toucan went really well with the pineapple, like, you know, kind of a tropical feel. Isn't that cute? And then I, I did, um, everybody's been doing these pie cards, and so this is kind of my take on the pie card, so we'll be doing that. And then I've got my little tutti fruity watermelon flavored um, gum pack. So in the comment section, I have created a link to the, um, the project sheet. It has all of the items that I use and the measurements. Um, so you can find all of that in the link in the comments. So that should be good for you guys. Let's see. Um, okay, so let's talk about prizes. Let me set these aside for a minute. I should introduce myself. I'm Tiffany Almeida with um, Pretty in Paper Crafts. And this is Coffee and a Card. I do this every, every Sunday at 8 a.m and um, I give prizes. So let me explain what we got going on here. So my first prize was for my uh, best kit ever, and I was giving away the birthday wishes. Remember that kind of cheesy little video I made about the best kit ever, which is also called the starter kit? Well, if you commented below and answered my question of what two free stamp sets you would get, you got entered into the drawing to win this stamp set. And as you can see, Amanda uh, Flahaven, I hope I said that right. Amanda Flahaven, you won. So congratulations. Isn't that awesome? So I'm going to be sending this stamp set to you. This is a stamp set that's in the occasions catalog. And just this morning, I saw a super cute project using this in the bird banter set. So congratulations on that. Okay, and then last week's video, if you commented on my video and said hello or said good morning and um, uh, commented, then you were entered to win um, the Tutti Fruity card pack, which is in the celebration catalog. And Jan, Jan, I don't know you, but congratulations, you commented on my video and you won. So um, I will be sending this to you, so make sure you message me and I'll be getting in, in contact with you also, but I need your address so I can send this to you. So congratulations on that. And then for everybody that shared my video, um, you're entered to win the Yay You stamp set. This is a hostess stamp set, and um, it is in the Occasions catalog, and you can only get it by being a hostess or placing a $150 order, so it's pretty special. I thought it was really cute. It has some really beautiful stamps on it, so I'll be drawing a winner for that. Yay, Amanda, I'm so glad. <clears throat> All right. Mary Lou Ryder. I don't know you, Mary Lou, but I'm super happy you won. I will be getting this to you. I'm gonna state I'm gonna um tape the ticket here so I know who won what. All right. Congratulations to all my fabulous winners. Shall you guys you guys wanna see what we're gonna win um this week for sharing and commenting? I decided to get a little um playful with next week's video and we're going to get messy with the embossing paste. So in the occasions catalog they've come out with two new embossing pastes. One is the silver embossing paste and one is the um, shimmer embossing paste. So it's like a glittery embossing paste. So um, for commenting on my video and watching today, someone is going to be winning the Sweet Soiree Decorative Masks, which you can use with the embossing paste to make a really beautiful designs, or you can actually just use it with ink and sponge. Um, there's a lot of fun things you can do with the masks. So, someone will be winning the masks, and if you've shared my video, um, you will get entered to win the silver embossing paste. Yes, Lisa, I have coffee. I'm being very careful with it. I'm gonna take a sip and then set it out of the way. It's so funny, I call it coffee in a card, but I really <laughs> rarely get to drink my coffee. I usually have to heat it back up afterwards. All right, so someone is gonna be winning the silver embossing paste, which is gonna be super fun, and then next week I'll show you how you can use it. And then um, someone will be winning the decorative mask for commenting today. So good luck, everybody. I love giving out these prizes. It's a lot of fun. I'm glad I can do it. Um, so that is that. Okay. Oh, before we get started, I want to show you guys my March classes because I'm super excited about them. 
Um, I don't know if you guys know this, but starting in January, I started doing um, technique classes each month. And they were to-go classes where I prepped the kits and mailed them directly to you. And then I did videos that I would email to you. And so the videos were tutorials that you could go step by step and um, make the projects. Well, this month's project is the Magical Shaker Cards. So um, January was watercolor, um, two, uh, yeah, Fri February were fancy fold cards, and then this month is the shaker cards. So I thought that the uh, Magical Day stamp set went perfectly for shaker cards. So you can see I have used several different kinds of fillers to make these shaker cards. So I used the wizard and I did gold flakes. I did the dragon and I did um, like he's in a snow globe. What's really cool is that it sees all the way through the card and he's in the inside of the card as well. So that one's a really fun one. And then of course I needed my, uni my unicorn because what's, you know, unicorns are the most magical creature I know. And then a beautiful mermaid in the hearts, um, in a heart shaker. So this is a really fun class and then I have a little bonus project for you when you register for this class. You'll also get this fun little project. I thought this would make a really cute little birthday party favor. Um, it's using the um, the gable boxes but I've just decorated it to look like a little castle. Isn't that cute? So I'm glad you guys like this. This Let me explain how we can get you registered for this class. Um, you actually just need to place an order on my online store. I have a suggested supply list. So there are some things that this class does not come with. You'll already need to own or purchase. Um, a, like for example, the stamp set. Um, and so you can place an order to get the product you need um, and use this hostess code by March 15th and you'll be entered to um, get this kit. Um, I'll send out the kits on the 20th of the month, and then the tutorials will be emailed to you by the 25th. So it should be between the 20th and 25th. Usually get those out pretty quick. But you'll have tutorial videos for all of the projects, and all of, uh, not all of the supplies. You'll have the supplies that aren't listed on the supply list um, in my event. So I've created an event for this, so look for it on my page. <clears throat> okay. And then my second class, I don't know if you guys have been seeing, but I have been playing with some brush out and I am in love. So my project class this, this month is brush out And I've gotten, I've, I've designed these four cards. So as you can see, um, played with some really, this, the colors just pop. I just love it. And some different techniques. So I'll be teaching you how to do um, these techniques. Now, um, you need some time to play with brush -o. So what we'll be doing is I have um, sample pieces, which I don't have with me, but I have samples that we're gonna put on a ring and they'll be kind of your guide to the different techniques. So we'll be playing and practicing on those samples and then we'll make the cards when you feel comfortable and you've played and you've learned to love it as much as I do. Aren't these super, super quick or cute? I read Terry, Terry's comment and I saw quick and I said quick instead of cute. So give me a heart if you love these projects. I'm super excited about these. So here's what comes in your class kit. So the class is $30 and you will get the two tools that you need and the watercolor paper. That is to make the four projects, the samples, and you'll get to take home your, your um, tools and your watercolor paper. Now you can, this is $30 for this class. This is March 24th at 10 a.m. at my house. So you have to be local. Um, and then I also have, um, this, these are the brush shows that I was telling you about. These are the watercolor crystals. This is how they come. And I just um, stored thumbtacks in them. I'm missing two, but I've stored thumbtacks in them to keep the crystals from coming out. So we'll talk to you about that. But you can add your own watercolor crystals to your class kit. And so it will bump it up to $60, but you'll get a free celebration item and you'll get everything in the class kit, including the brush of watercolor crystals. So this is gonna be a super fun class. You are going to love the brush show. I, as soon as I started playing with it, I was really intimidated with it at first, but as soon as I started playing with it, I fell in love. So I hope to get you as excited as I am um, with these brush shows. All right. Let's get started. What do you guys think? Do you guys love, I, as soon as I started playing with these Tutti Frutti, um, with the fruit basket set, I fell in love. And now, um, let me show you what the fruit basket set looks like. 
Here's the fruit basket stamp set. It comes with pears, strawberries, pineapples, and watermelon. Um, and then you have a basket and, a, and a, a bowl. Super, super cute. Lots of fun things to do with it. But then with your, um, if you buy the fruit basket in a bundle, you get these four, stamp, uh, four punches. And I love punches. Punches are my thing. Um, punches are so much easier than the framelits and I, they're just quick and convenient. And so you would get the four fruit in the punches. You can get this entire bundle, the, the stamp set and the, and the um, punches for $35. So I think that was like a really um, affordable bundle that can make some really, really cute cards. And if you ordered the bundle or anything that's $25 in, um, on my online store using this hostess code by Wednesday, and you'll get all three of my make and takes for free. I will ship those directly to you. So super, super cute. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and go and make all three projects. I'm gonna go ahead and start with my little pie card. So everybody's been making these pie cards, right? You guys have been seeing on Pinterest and Facebook and stuff, people have been using um, the basket weaving stamp or embossing folder to make pie. Is that not the cutest thing? Look at that texture, it's so cool. This is one of the free celebration items that they just released, the second um, release here. Um, it comes in a bundle with a stamp set, a beautiful stamp set called Blossoming, Blossoming Basket. And it comes together and it's one of those items you can get for free with a $100 purchase. So, um, so here's, I used the um, basket for that. Let's go ahead and pull my, pro, my um, supplies over here. I'll go through what I have. And again, all the measurements are on that project sheet. So if you need to go back and get measurements, they are there. I'm using Night of Navy. I thought the Night of Navy and the Real Red and the Lemon Lime went really real, well together. And the paper that I'm using is the Tutti Frutti. And let's see if I can pull that out. Where's my Tutti Frutti? Oh, it's right here. Tutti Frutti, um, this pack of designer series paper is six by six and it comes in so many cool uh, fruit designs. And then the other side is uh, patterns and coordinating colors. So really, really cute. I've been using this a lot, as you can see, I've got lots of little scraps going on. Um, but that is the designer series paper that we're using. And then of course, I loved this lemon lime kind of checkered look and I thought that was very, you know, like a kitchen tablecloth, I don't know, is what I pictured. So I've got my pieces here. Um, and then for my pie, <clears throat> I'm going to be actually shading um, my embossing folder with um, early espresso ink and then embossing it so that I can get kind of a textured, like, you know, pie crust isn't all the same color. Some of it gets toasty in the oven. I have my sponge brayer that I'm gonna use to, and I'm getting my early espresso ink. So I'm gonna move this stuff out of the way because you know me and in ink. Yes, yes, Janie, exactly. It is Erica's um, idea. Am I too far out? I don't think I can zoom in because I'm using my phone. I think I'm where I'm at. So if it's too far away, I'll try to give you guys some close-ups of stuff as I'm working on it. I'm sorry. I try to get you guys a good picture. There's always something technical with my videos every, every, um, every time I do this. And hopefully I'm not mirrored. Am I mirrored this time? Okay. You guys still see a clear picture? Or did I lose you? Okay, so I have colored the inside of my embossing folder. Now I wanted to make sure that I colored the side that has the Stampin' Up! logo on it. Okay, and then I'm gonna put my piece of crumb cake cardstock down on the inside and just close it, okay? So that is going to color the cardstock as I run it through my Big Shot. So I'm using my, um, uh, normal base plate and pull my big shot in here so this is a dynamic embossing folder it's a little bit thicker um, I'm left-handed today yay Amanda thank goodness a little bit thicker than the normal embossing folder so you only need one of your plates so just slide that on top and run it through okay so I fixed the mirror problem that's good news all right, and look at that. Look how it makes that just so much more. It makes those edges stand out so much more. And it looks 
like a pie crust, right? Thank you, Erica, for th coming up with that idea. And then you can just easily clean your um, embossing folder. The ink comes right off. You just wipe it off with a, with a baby wipe or soap and water. Just comes right off. No harm done. So that comes right off there. Okay, so we need to do some uh, framelit work. We need to um, cut the pie, and then there's a scalloped edge that looks like pie crust around it. And I just took a piece of craft paper and I'm going to cut the pie crust out of that. I kind of wanted it to be a different color. It doesn't have to be, but I just wanted it to stand out just a little bit more. And then of course I need a rolling pin because you can't make a pie without a rolling pin, right? So you need a rolling pin. Um, so I cut that out of craft too because my sister has a very nice rolling pin and it's, and it's the love of her life. Like she guards it like no other and it's made out of wood and I'm not allowed to put it in the dishwasher or get it wet or anything. So there's apparently really, you know, the really good ones are made out of wood. I wouldn't know, I, that's beyond my expertise. So we're going to use the Stitch um, Shapes Framelits. Right, Janie? It looks so yummy, I love pie. So I'm using the third or the second to smallest stitch shape for my pie because I kind of wanted it to be proportionate to my bowl. You could make the pie bigger, but it just looked funny with the little bowl of strawberries. So I wanted to make it proportionate to that. So I have my circle, my stitch circle, and I'm gonna try and cut out both at the same time. So I only have to bring my big shot once. And then I'm using my apron builder framelits because they've got all those kitchen utensils. And you know, you could do, you could have a, a oven mitt, you could have, some spatulas, you could have whatever you wanted, but I'm gonna use the rolling pin. All right, so I've got those. Bring my big shot back into view. And I'm gonna use my, my magnetic plate because it's amazing for the framelits. So I just need, I had a way bigger piece than I needed before. I'm just gonna conserve it. I can get another little piece of pie out of there. And I'm just gonna Oh, I need to cut my scallop for my pie. I should do that too. So I have my layering circles and I need the circle that just kind of coordinates with, um, I'll show you, it just it just perfectly um, outlines the scallop circle. So that's the one I'm gonna use. And I need my second plate. Oh, I'm off, I'm off a little bit, here you go. So see, I've got my stuff on there and I'll run that through. All right, got my pieces. Remove my big shot. Okay, let me put all my pieces back so I don't lose them. I'm getting into spring and strawberries and pies and fruits. I don't know, I thought the fruit was super cute. Like I felt inspired. I'm just putting all these back because I will lose them. You guys have seen me on camera lose things right in front of my face. And these little pieces are easy to lose. Okay, so we've got that out of the way. All right, so now we have our pie. And we have our little um, rolling pin. And so now we need to do some stamping. And I just have a little scrap of paper and we need to get our fruit basket stamp set out. Okay, so I'll be stamping the bowl. I'll be stamping it twice. Once the outline in black, and then the center I did in the Knight of Navy to kind of coordinate with the colors. So I'll get my basic black ink out and my Knight of Navy. And I won't open that one up until I'm ready to use it because then I'll get them confused. You guys have seen me stamp before. You know that's easy to do. Okay. So I'm just stamping off to the corner here, and then I'm gonna clean that off, because I need the other one. So then the center of the bowl, dry that off a little bit, okay. And then I need the Knight of Navy. Now there are outlines to the um, little pieces of fruit. There's outline pieces on the stamps, but you don't need those if you're gonna be punching the fruit out, because it punches, um, it does cut off some of the fruit image when you punch it, and so the outline doesn't even show up. 
So let's see, I'm trying to line this up as good as possible and I think I'm off the mark a little bit. Yep, I'm a little bit off, okay. Let's see, I do have, a, well no, I'll just try again. Let's just try again. I'm gonna do this one first this time. Maybe that will help. I'm never right the first time. Try it again, try, try, try again. Try that off. I do have uh, Night and Navy blends. I could try and fill that in, but I'll just try stamping it again. And there, that's a little bit better. Still a little bit off, but still better. Okay. <clears throat> We're gonna share, are we sharing uh, recipes? I'm gonna have to get that, I'm gonna have to catch up with you guys later, find out what you're sharing. Okay, so as I was saying, there is a strawberry filler. Um, let me put these on blocks so you can see them. There's a strawberry filler piece and then there's the leaf piece, they're separate. So see, strawberries and then the top. There's also a lining. So this would be if maybe you were just stamping directly on the paper and not punching it out because the punch will not even um, get close to the border. So I'm gonna put these away, I'm gonna get the, I'm gonna get real red and I'm going to get um, Emerald MB. Those are gonna be the colors that I use for my strawberries. So I'm gonna do real red first for the strawberries and I need six strawberries in total. So I'm just gonna stamp six strawberries and what I try to keep in mind and what you'll wanna do too is the punch when you punch, um, the green is on the top and the strawberries on the bottom and it's pointing down towards you. So make sure your strawberries are stamped that way so it's easy to punch off the paper. So, oop, didn't wanna stick to my block for a second there. All right, so I'm just gonna stamp six of these, just spacing them out a little bit on a scrap of paper. There's three. There, okay, and then we need our Emerald MB. I do not mind, no, please share away, Janie. That's totally fine. Sharing is caring. I love Janie's blog, she's super, super talented. If you guys haven't seen Janie, she is amazing. She does a lot of awesome um, 3D projects. Super cute little projects. And she does challenges too when they give away prizes and stuff. So definitely go check her out. She has amazing projects. She's inspired me with a lot of her things. Okay, so there's your strawberries. And we're just gonna punch those out. And this is the fun part. Just punching out those little strawberries. So look, look how much strawberry actually gets cut off. I'll show you here what the, when I punch the first one. You see that? Whoop. And there it goes flying. So see, quite a bit of the strawberry is left behind, so that border would not even show up if you stamped it. But they make the cutest little strawberries. Whoop. And you could always face it down and put it to the thing there so it doesn't pop and fly away and you lose it. Okay, so I've got my six strawberries there. And now I just need to fussy cut the bowl out. And the bowl's pretty easy to cut. Um, it's pretty much straight lines, it's not bad. It takes a few seconds. And as you guys know, it's kind of hard to see when you're left-handed, like it's hard to see the, how much, I like to leave a white space as much as possible as I can. It makes it look like it was punched out, but my cutting skills are pretty scary, so I'm not too good at it. 
But that's the goal, is to try and leave some white space to make it look like it was punched out. But I, don't, I did not achieve that goal. But that's okay. All right, so there's my little bowl. I'm gonna trim this down a little bit more. Okay, there's my bowl. So now we pretty much have all of our pieces we just need to assemble. Um, don't, do not glue this down to your base yet because we have some ribbon, some lemon lime twist ombre ribbon. If you guys haven't played with this ribbon, uh, you should. You're gonna love it. It's so cute. I love the lemon lime. Everything I love, everything lemon lime. Okay, so I'm just going to glue down my designer series paper because that part we can do. And then before I do anything else, and pro well, pro and probably before I sh even glued this down, you guys see that I need to do some stamping on the lemon lime. Should not have glued this down first because if I screw up, that's it. It's already glued down. So I'm going to be absolutely perfect when I stamp. Right? Ha ha ha. So I'm using the Made with Love in the Apron of Love set. I couldn't wait to use this this uh, this phrase. I thought it was super cute. I love the font. And of course I love the, the saying. It goes perfectly because I made you a strawberry pie out of paper. Because I love you. All right. Hi, Mary Lou. Hey, did you know you were one of my winners today? You won the stamp set that I was giving away last week. The Yay You stamp set. Congratulations, Missy. I need your address. I'm going to message you later and get your address. So I can send that to you. All right. Made with love. Look, turned out perfect. Yay. Okay, the rule is no smudging, no touching. I'm not going to do anything to ruin it. <laughs> Yeah, right. Famous last words. Okay, so now I can wrap my lemon lime twist ombre ribbon. This is just the coolest. It's like the perfect size. It's super easy to use, and um, I just love that ombre look to it. So um, a little trick that I learned, and I can't remember who taught it to me, um, was to tie a knot to wrap wrap your fingers wrap wrap the ribbon around your fingers two times to tie a knot, and um, if you do it right, and she made it look super easy, easy on the video, if you do it right, you'll have like a perfect knot ribbon with perfect edges. So we'll see. I don't know. Okay, so then you supposedly, so now you cut your loop like so, and then you have this cute and it didn't turn out too bad. See that? You just wrap that around and I'm gonna put some adhesive on the back of my designer series paper. Have you guys ever had a strawberry pie? I'm trying to think if I ever have even eaten a strawberry pie. Sounds amazing. I think actually I have. I think I have had a strawberry pie. My favorite is blueberry pie. I have made a few blueberry pies. There's a blueberry patch nearby that we can actually pick fresh blueberries every year about July time and I make blue blueberry pie. My family loves it. So now that I've got my ribbon on and I've glued, put glue on the back of my paper, I'm just gonna put that down. Hopefully I centered that okay. Put that down. All right, so now we can start decorating. <clears throat> so I'm just gonna be gluing my pie to my pie crust. And then gluing my pie down to my paper. And I just kind of centered that down there. And then I definitely put my bowl on dimensionals because I want to put my strawberries behind it. So just like two dimensionals will be fine. And I just put them, you know, on the sides. Not towards the top because I want to tuck my strawberries behind the bowl. And if my dimensionals are in the way, they won't tuck. So there we go. You're welcome, Janie. Okay. 
So I'm just overlapping my pie slightly, like so. I'm gonna bring it up just a tad. There we go. You, you figure out where you want it. Anywhere's fine, okay? And then what I did is I glued three down just directly to the paper, three strawberries, because I wanted to, some dimension. I didn't want them all popping up. Let's see if I can get some glue out of my Tombow maybe. Oh, well, that's a lot. Okay, I'm just putting glue in the back of my strawberries and I'm going to be um, just positioning them in the background because I'm going to have, <laughs> I'm gonna have glue everywhere. I'm going to have some popping up on dimensionals. So, so I'm gonna put two on dimensionals to put in the bowl. And I think I want one, I want them kind of different, going different directions. Don't want them all facing the same way. A bowl of strawberries doesn't, isn't all uniform. Good morning. Good morning, Shaylee. And then I have, I think I'm going to do one sideways there. Okay, so I've got my bowl of strawberries and then I, I wanted to have one of my strawberries down in the corner of my card. So I just stuck that down right there at the bottom of my pie. And then the last thing I have to glue on is my little rolling pin. Don't forget about your rolling pin. I'm gonna just tuck that a little bit underneath the bowl. Just like so. Looks like I've been baking in my kitchen all day. Isn't that cute? Look at that. So there you go. Super easy, very cute, very spring, very, um, a really good friendship card. I really like that. I love the colors. What do you think? Give me a thumbs up if you love that. If you love the colors, give me a little harder a thumbs up. This is probably my favorite project of all three. Love this card. And you can even trim your ribbon if the ribbon's bothering you. But super cute, fun card to make. And that is card number one. Okay, so let's do the shaker card next. My little, where's my little toucan? My little shaker toucan card. You guys noticed uh, what I used here for the leaves? Can anybody tell me? Tell me if you know what I used for the leaves here. And don't cheat, don't look at the project sheet. Um, I thought that was really cool. I thought it was cool little branch for my little toucan to sit on. Um, and then I used the pineapples as my little shaker card. So I'll show you how I did this. Again, all of the, um, all of the measurements and supply list are on my project sheet. You can get the measurements there and the item numbers. Um, so I used a piece of the thick whisper white cardstock. Thick is amazing. The thick white cardstock is amazing for card bases. And then I used my lemon lime twist as my background piece. And you can actually just glue that directly down. We'll just get some of those pieces glued down. Good guess, but that um, those leaves are actually the boxwood wreaths in the annual catalog. The boxwood wreaths come in a set. I think there's, let's see, how many are there? There are 12 in a set. They're in the annual catalog and the um, accessories, and they are wire, so they are bendable and moldable. So we'll be using one of those for our, um, Two can to stand on and uh, these work really well with the barn door as a little wreath for the barn door super cute right all right so I put my lemon base down so you're also going to need a piece of window sheet another piece of lemon lime to do your window and then designer series paper and this is the pineapple designer series paper and as you can see the stripes on the inside that's just the other side of the paper I'm going to show you how I did that by just using one piece of paper you will be needing the um, layering squares framelit dies. So the largest layering um, scalloped square is what we're gonna be using to cut our window out of. And then we're gonna be using a smaller window. And I don't think it's, is it this one? No, I should have marked these. That's not that one. The, not the largest window, but the second largest window Think this is it. Is it? Ha! 
I don't even know. I'm just telling you. I'm just I'm just telling you guys random things. Nope, it's not that one. So you'll have to play with it and figure out how big you want your window. I believe it's the third largest. So I'm gonna cut out my frame with these. And then I'm also going to cut out my window with the largest just flat square. That's gonna fit perfectly inside the scallop and give me a little space to glue it down. And then um, I'm gonna be cutting um, the designer series paper with that same square. So I'm going to put all this back in and bring out my big shot. I'm going to do a couple, couple cuts. Okay. Move everything out of the way. Okay, so got my big shot. We'll cut the we'll cut the frame first. And um Basically, I'm going to try and do both at the same time. You could do them separately, but I'm going to try and cut the entire frame out all at once. Okay, so now I've got my frame, and you could definitely use these other pieces for another project. So I've got my frame there, and then I need to cut my window sheet with that, with this, the largest square, because it fits perfectly inside the scallop, and I can hardly see it on this. And I love the window sheets from Stampin' Up! because they're so sturdy. Yeah, Janie, aren't those boxwood wreaths perfect for this? I just thought the toucan could sit perfectly on top of that. All right, so I've cut my window out. Now I'm going to cut my designer series paper with that same square that's gonna fit inside the scallop. And the reason is is because when I cut this out, I'm gonna flip it over and have the stripes um, showing. So we're gonna, I'm gonna center that a little bit better and slide that through. Okay, so we'll get that, and that's all the cutting we need with the Big Shot. So now we've got our pieces here. I'm gonna put these framelits back before I lose them. I need to get these on magnetic sheets because they are tough to keep organized. So not all of my framelits are on magnetic sheets yet. I need to, need to work on that. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is just glue this piece down I was going to use liquid glue, but it might be more difficult than it's worth. I think I'm going to have to get a new one soon. All right. So just going to make sure your pineapples are the right way, facing the right way. And center that as best you can. And that is where it's going to live. I'm just get excess glue off just press that down and then I need to glue the center but I'm going to flip it over and have it the stripe side so that way you can serve your paper and I just wanted it to have a little bit of a different um, view to pop against the pineapples okay so I've got my picture frame, right? And I've got my window sheet and I'm going to glue that to the inside of my uh, scallop shape. And you see how it fits perfectly inside there? So I'm going to just add a little, a very thin line, a very thin line of Tombow. I don't want it leaking out my window. Okay, pray for my steady hands here. There we go. So just let that dry a minute. We'll set that aside while it dries. Okay, <clears throat> so now the toucan is from one of my favorite stamp sets in the Occasions catalog. It's the Bird Banter 
Of course, if you were on at on stage in November, Brian King, um, he demonstrated the stamp set and I fell in love with it. Everyone else in there fell, fell in love with it. We all were gonna order the set just because he made it look so cool. And um, the toucan is a little tropical bird. I thought he was cute. I'm gonna put him on a block and take this other one off. Probably lose that because I didn't put it right back in its case. Okay, now I colored my toucan with blend, so I need to use Memento ink when I um, stamp him. And I just stamped him on a scrap of paper. There he is, he's so cute. I love the toucan. And uh not fruity pebbles, but what was the what was the toucan cereal? Fruity fruit loops, fruit loops. See fruit loops go with the tutti fruity theme. Maybe that's why I associate him with the pineapples. Okay, gotta get my blends. And I needed my I needed a black um Blends does not have a black marker, so I'm just using my Stampin' Write black, basic black uh, marker, and that works perfectly to cover or to color his body. And I'm just gonna be really careful and color him in. There are two ends to the to the markers, so if you don't feel comfortable using the thick thick brush, there is a finer point. I'm gonna color the end of his beak black. There we go. And then um, I was, I actually had to do research to see colors on toucans. Did you know that their little eye area can be red, yellow? I liked that. Some of them are white, some of them are yellow. And then I played with his beak a little bit. And then I thought part of his beak could be orange because I thought that looks cool. So I'm using the pumpkin pie, the light pumpkin pie, and coloring his beak. Your toucan can be whatever you want him to be. Okay. And then I even um, went back over the yellow a little bit and did some shading. And I'll show you. This is why I love blends so much. Because you can come back over with the yellow and blend it. And you don't even really see the orange, but it looks a little bit shaded, a little bit more dark. And then I came back over my orange a little bit and did a little bit of shine on the top of his beak. And then I even, and then I decided to do green wings because I've seen green on two cans. And I colored his wings in. And then I went back over with the yellow and did some shading with the yellow. And I just like the dimension that that adds. Just a little bit of detail, right? Just a little bit of shading and um, not too fussy. You can make your toucan anything you want. Easy on the squeezy, Janie. I love it. Blinger dingers and easy on the squeezy. You guys have really clever little sayings that I'm gonna adopt. So he's not too bad to cut out either, and it doesn't have to be precise. You can see on my other bird here, I did not cut his feet out, that's ridiculous. He can just have a little bit of white space, and I guarantee you, you didn't notice it and you didn't care when I showed you my sample, and nobody's gonna care about yours either. So I promise you, it's all, all right to, um, have a little bit of white showing around his feet. Does not have to be precise. Don't, don't cut off his little toes. Little tropical bird. It's feeling fruity. And the cool thing is, is that like with this set, you know, the fruit set, the fruit basket set, is you can use it with so many different treats. You know, you could do it for a party favor and give like little kids um, those little fruit snacks. Wouldn't that be cute? Or um, fruit roll-ups or fruit bark. Um, little little mini box of uh, fruit loops. You could put a toucan. Um, 
There's all kinds of fun things you can do with the fruit. I found even some fruit beads on Amazon that I almost bought because I thought I could do something with the fruit beads and the fruit basket. There's a lot of fun things you could do. So now I've got my little toucan and I need to um, stamp my sentiment. And is that not the cutest sentiment? Just a little toucan of my appreciation. I love stamp sets that have play on words. It's like one of my favorite things and I thought that was too cute. Toucan cute. <laughs> okay, that should not be my job. Don't hire me to do play on words, but very cute. So, just a little toucan, toucan of my appreciation. I just stamped him. I just stamped it close to the right side so that um, I can do the dovetail on the other side. Just use a scrap piece of paper because we're going to trim it down to size. Okay. Oh, smart. You could totally stamp his feet on the frame, Janie. That's a great idea. Oh, you have to be super more skilled than me to come up with those fancy things. I am just off screen here trying to trim down. I'm just going to trim right below my sentiment. It's right about less, uh, slightly less than three quarters. So maybe um, three and five eighths or... Uh, five-eighths, five-eighths of an inch. But you cut it down to the size you want and I smudged it. So I'm gonna flip it over and try again. My big sausage fingers smudged it. See, there's always two sides to a paper. You never glue it down. And I think I, I smeared it again, but we'll see which side I like better. It's okay, that's good. Okay, I'm gonna let that dry a little bit before I punch it because I seem to wanna smudge everything. And I need to do my little pineapples, my little pineapples. So these, this is a fun one, um, these little pineapple images. I'm gonna switch out my strawberries for my pineapples. Clean my block off a little bit better. So I've got my pineapple image and it's two pieces, it's the top top greenery piece and the bottom piece. Now the two colors that coordinate with the designer series paper, the Tutti Frutti designer series paper, is the Daffodil Delight and the Lemon Lime Twist. So those are the colors that I chose to stamp my pineapples. Now you could do a mixture of colors. You could do um, crumb, some in crumb cake, some in peekaboo peach, um, all kinds of different colors, but I'm gonna keep it simple and just do Daffodil Delight. Oh, okay, and again, keep in mind the way that um, this punches. So the bottom needs to be at the bottom towards you and the green needs to be up away from you. So, and you'll just punch a bunch of these, as many as you want in your shaker. Look how tiny and cute they are. Probably can't see, my camera's probably way too far away, but look how cute that is. These stamps are amazing. They have such fun detail. You can make little pineapples. Our creative challenge this month is flowers and I've been wanting to do everything but flowers. Creative challenges, um, uh, our team leader, Erica, Sirwin, she challenges us to um, do projects and share our projects that we make. And this month she challenged us to do flower projects. And when we enter our flower projects, we get entered to win free stuff like stamp sets and other items that she gives away at our team meetings. And I want to do other things. So I don't have very many entries in there with flowers because I did manly stuff and now I'm doing fruity stuff. There's a lot of beautiful um, flowery um, things, especially like the new designer series paper um, that's in the celebration release. Oh my gosh, so cute. So I'll be, I'll definitely be doing some projects with those, but. All right, so 
Just cleaning off my stamps a little bit. And now I get to punch out my pineapples. <clears throat> These guys are so cute. Your pineapples are gonna fly everywhere. How many did I get on this paper? Let's see, did I get 10 or 12? Didn't need a very big piece at all. So I'm showing you guys how to make a shaker card. Shaker cards are so fun. That's why you should do my technique class this month. I love the Magical Day stamp set. I thought it made really cute shaker cards. And so does the toucan with all the little fruits. Okay, so I've got my, my pineapples. And then the other thing that I added on inside my shaker, I don't know if you can see it, is um, sequins. Now I used the Tutti Frutti sequins, as you can see, some of them have fallen out of the case here. I used my Tutti Frutti sequins and I wanted to show you that you can, I don't think I want any berry burst ones though. You can um, take the two sequins and stick them together so the adhesive sides are together, like so, and then put them inside of your shaker. And then they won't stick to um, the shaker, but they'll stick to each other. And you've got some more fun little pieces. So if you need, if you need sequins in these colors, that's a little trick that you can do. You can stick them together. Now I also think you can take the adhesive off the backs too, if you want. You could peel the little dots off the back and um, they can be single, non-sticky non adhesives or um, sequins. See? So once you've got enough sequins that you're happy with, I wanna do some yellow ones. Sticking some together, like so. All right, I think that's enough. So I'm going to put my adhesive backed sequins back in their little place here. I wish that it was like a resealable container, don't you guys? <laughs> I need a resealable container, okay. So what I did is for the sequins and the filler, I just um, put it in the center of my square on my page or on my card because um, I want to be able to line up my, um, my window and I'll show you that in a minute, but I want these to be out of the way and in the center. So that should be good. Um, they won't stick to anything. Now you need the foam adhesive strips to create a border around your window. So here's some foam adhesive strips. This is what they look like. And you're just going to build a frame around your box. And you want it to be out of sight, so you wanna make sure it's centered on the lemon lime frame. So can you see that? And I'm just going to turn at the edge and keep going. Keep going and turn. like so, and turn again. And if you don't have enough, that's okay. You can get another piece. And I'm just going to make sure that I cut off just enough. Like so. Super easy. And I'm just gonna take off the backing. Center my project, make sure all my little pieces are out of the way, out of the center, or I mean in the center, out of the way. And I'm just going to stick this down over the box. There, now look at that, it's so cute. Okay, so here's how I, so this is a little bit tricky sticking this down, but I think I found a, pro, um, a, a way that works really well. So what I did is I formed it an L because I want it to wrap around the side and the top here, the side and the bottom, I'm sorry. 
So what I did to stick it down, because I was like, oh gosh, what am I going to do that's not going to be a mess, is I actually used the tear and tape. It worked really, really well. And what I did is I just slid it under my frame as much as possible, tucked it in. See, I only went about up, you know, about three quarters of the way. And then the same thing down at the bottom. So just went um, slightly over and about halfway, little, little, little past halfway, and then just peeled off the backing. And I wanted to tuck it in as far as I could because the boxwood wreath isn't that wide. So I didn't want any sticky adhesive stuck to um, anything outside of the, the boxwood wreath. But look at that, then it just sticks down really well and you can fluff up the, fluff up the leaves all you want. And there you go, see? And there's no adhesive that's exposed that can be sticky or anything like that. Okay, so now that I think my ink has dried all the way and I'm not gonna smudge it, I'm going to use my triple banner punch to dovetail the saying here. And I like to do it upside down so that I can see if I'm gonna be cutting off any of my image. Can you see that? So I can see if I push it all the way, I'm gonna cut off part of my saying. So you, I just slide it about halfway, get it centered. Like so, it's gonna be good enough. And there we go. And then you got your little, little saying. And I just glued that to the top here, just slightly off a little bit. I'm gonna use um, liquid Tombow for that. So just like so. And then I used dimensionals to glue my little bird down. <clears throat> like so. And I know, I love the colors too, Amber, super cute. And I just stuck him right there at the bottom. Maybe he's gonna be, you know, eating some of these pineapples. He's trying to catch them in the shakers, I don't know. But anyways, I thought this was super cute. I love the toucan. I love the use of the boxwood wreath. So it's fun sometimes to think out of the box and put things together that you wouldn't have thought went together, like my tro tropical pineapples and my toucan and my little boxwood wreath. So very, very fun, cute little card. Love me some toucans. Um, that's project number two. Okay. Project number three is just a fun little treat box. And it's just holding a piece of the Juicy Fruit gum pack. And I did the watermelon Juicy Fruit because my little box is watermelon. And it's just a fun little treat. Um, could go in an Easter basket, could go um, in a birthday gift, could go as a thank you gift or a party favor. It really works for anything. Um, so I'm gonna show you how simple and fun to make this project is. That was backwards. How simple and fun this project is to make. All right, so I just have a couple pieces here. Again, on my project sheet that I attached to this um, to this video has all the measurements and score lines and everything, so you'll have everything to recreate this. Um, I am going to cut up the center. I've got score lines that come to the center and score lines that go down the sides. I'm just going to cut this here to make a little tab. And I'm gonna cut the other side just up to that first score line. You see that? And then I'm gonna burnish all my edges and the best thing to use is the bone folder. You just wanna do all your lines. Okay. Just like so. And then you're going to put adhesive on the little tabs in the center. So I'm gonna put a piece of adhesive here and a piece of adhesive here. You could use um, fast fuse or you can use tear and tape. And then I want um, a strip of tear and tape on one of the sides of flaps. And you wanna do the same on both sides. So if you're gonna do this side here, then do this side across from it. Um, 
And that means that the other side of this piece is going to be the front because you want clean edges. My fingers are dirty. I'm smudging this paper. Let me use a wipey and see if I can get some of this off. <clears throat> My smudgy fingers. Okay, so now um, you'll want to take the backing off of your tear and tape. Okay. Like so. And then I'm going to form a box. So I'm taking the little tabs and putting them against the, the piece that does not have any adhesive on the inside. So I'm just making a, a 90 degree angle here. I'm going to tuck the tabs and just glue that down. And then the sides that do have adhesive are gonna come up and meet the top or meet the sides and just glue that down. Just making a little simple box. This is a really simple box. It doesn't even have a lid or anything. It just, it's gonna be super easy. Your gum's gonna slide right in. Okay, and then I have a piece of that designer series Tutti Frutti paper and I liked, I thought about using the watermelon side. You totally can do that. Um, it's a, it's very cute. You could definitely do that. Or you can do the little, um, backside that has the sprinkles. What do you guys think? You tell me, which one should I use? Should I use the watermelon or the sprinkles on this one? What do you think? You tell me, give me a thumbs up. If you want me to use the watermelon side, do, 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 do. I know there's a little bit of a lag, so I got to give you guys a second. Which one do you think? Watermelon or sprinkles? Seeing thumbs up for sprinkle or for watermelon. All right, I'll try the watermelon. We'll see which one we like better. Okay, so we're gonna just use some regular adhesive. I don't know where I put my adhesive. There it is. Just gonna glue that down. Oop, I'm at the end of my adhesive. Gonna get the fast fuse out. Okay, we're putting the watermelon down. And it probably would have been better if I hadn't built my box up yet, but as you can see, I was able to get it on just fine. So you do what, what, what you prefer. Now I have a, a piece of the um, Daffodil Delight paper, and I'm gonna be using the Star Punch, the Star, Starburst Punch. I really like this punch. It makes that Starburst circle um, so I'm just going to punch a piece out of a scrap here and that's going to be our little center. Okay. And then I need to do some stamping. So I've got a scrap to stamp our watermelon and a scrap for the sentiment. And so again, the watermelon is just as fun to stamp as the others. Um, uh, it's a two step stamp. So you've got, let's put our pineapple back so we can get our other one out. So we've got the rind and we've got the center. And again, the colors that I used were real red and emerald envy. So I already have those out. So I'm going to stamp the emerald envy rind first and then the center. And, um, we need three little watermelons, so I'm going to try and do three. So there's one rind, two rinds, and I don't think I can fit one there, so I'll do it this way, like so. Okay, and then we're gonna do our watermelon centers in real red. And I love how the little seeds are white. Thought that was cute. Now I just need to line this up and hopefully not have any white space. Oh, pretty good, I like that. There we go, and one more. Wouldn't this make some fun, this would be really fun to make your own designer series paper. You could just stamp fruit all over the piece. It'd be fun. You're like, that doesn't sound like fun. Your, your, your idea of fun's crazy. I love stamping, so anything stamping is fun. Okay, 
So now I'm just going to cut out my watermelons. And if you didn't stamp exactly perfect like me, then you can cut that part off. Love it. Because it doesn't punch out the full watermelon, so you have a little bit of grace on the edges if things didn't line up quite right. So there's my three watermelon. And now I need to stamp my sentiment. Um, my sentiment, is, did I put it away? Or I don't think I even got it out yet. I used you are the sweetest. There's happy birthday to you, yay, friend. We make a great pair, hello, and to and from. So this is a ton of different stamps um, that you can use in this in this um, set, which is, I love. I mean, and $35 for four punches and a stamp set, that's a pretty good deal, right? How many of you already have the Fruit Basket stamp set? And how many of you love it? I love this set. It's so fun. As soon as I started playing with it. Okay, so I stamped off to the side. You can have a straight edge but I forgot that I wanted to try it a different way. So I'm gonna flip it over and stamp again because I want it to be in the center this time and I wanna dovetail on both sides. So I'm gonna stamp it in the center and then I'm gonna dovetail both sides. You can do it however it makes you happy. But I like to mix things up. As you can see, I'm like never the same. So I put my Starburst on with some dimensionals. Three dimensionals will do. And just center that like so. And then I put dimensionals on my little watermelon. I love the mini dimensionals. They are perfect for all these little pieces. You've noticed I haven't had to cut a single dimensional down to size. Everything has fit and I love it. Thank you Stampin' Up! for coming up with mini dimensionals. They have made my life so much easier. Except for these tiny dimensional backings, I find them everywhere. <laughs> I'm sure you guys find them too. Okay, so before I glue my watermelon down, I wanna do my, I wanna dovetail my banner and hopefully not smudge any ink. So there's my text. Going to punch about so, and there's my, and there, there we go. So now, oh, look it, I have a little stray watermelon stuck to me. How'd that happen? Okay, so now I'm gonna glue this down. <clears throat> and I think I'm going to put it in the center. And then I can put my watermelon around it. My watermelon are gonna be. I kinda like it with the watermelon. Look at that. It's kinda cute with the watermelon. Super cute. And then you'll take your Daffodil Delight. I only have one pack of the gum, so I'm not gonna really show you, but you'll take your Stitch Daffodil Delight and you just wrap it around your gum and tie a bow. That's it. I'm gonna do two bows so you can see. You need to give yourself enough room to do a bow. Kinda of hard standing up, show you standing up with the gum standing up, but there you go. Just trying to keep all my pieces flat. You'll tie a bow, trim the edge. I'll take that one off. Trim the edge, slide it in. Now it can get stuck on the little tabs on the side, but you can just work with it and it will go down. And there you have it. Isn't that cute? Now you have a little treat. I'll trim this off. Now you have a little treat, super cute. Which one do you like better? Watermelon or sprinkles? I kind of like both. I don't know how you choose. They're super cute. 
So let me go ahead and bring back all three projects so you guys can see what we did today. What do you think? Did you guys love it? Are you in love with the fruit basket? Give me a heart if you're in love with this set. I'm, I am. I fell in love with it. I had a blast playing with it. I want to keep playing with it. Um, again, you guys, if you place an order of $25 on my um, online store by Wednesday, use this hostess code and I'll send you everything to make these three projects. And then you guys can get some tutti fruity fun in. Oh, see, you guys love this set. I love it too. It's so much fun. Um, and again, the whole bundle for the tutti fruity is 35 bucks. So you could have everything you need um, to make a ton of fun little projects uh, for $35. And remember, only through the end of March, you can place an order of $50 or more and get an item uh, out of the celebration catalog. So you could get the, um, the weave, the basket weave folder. It, what is it called? Bastic Weave Dynamic Textures Impressions Embossing Folder. Um, here's that designer series paper I was telling you about that I can't wait to color the beautiful flowers. Everybody's been coloring those flowers. Um, so I'm excited for that. So you guys, I hope you have a fabulous um, Sunday. Thank you so much for joining me this morning. Um, and I hope that I get to see you again next week. Good luck. Make sure if you haven't shared, you share so you can get a chance to win the new embossing paste. I'm going to be showing you guys how to use this fun embossing paste next week. And you could win a tub of it um, just by sharing the video. And make sure you leave a comment and say hello because then you'll be entered to win the um, the mask the decorative mask that you can use with the embossing paste or with ink um so i'll be showing you guys that fun some fun projects next week with that thank you again bye everybody thank you so much we'll see you next time bye